So ovulation is the process by which the ovary releases an egg. And ovulation typically occurs about midway between a woman's menstrual cycles. So if a woman has fairly predictable monthly cycles, typically that window of ovulation is somewhere between the 10th and the 20th day of her cycle. Ovulation doesn't occur every month. It is very normal for a regularly menstruating woman to occasionally have an irregular cycle that is suggestive of a missed or late ovulation. But it is not normal for a woman to not ovulate most of the time. So the process of ovulation induction is treatment for women who do not ovulate on their own regularly to make them ovulate. You can imagine that if an egg isn't releasing from the ovary, the best sperm in the world wouldn't be able to make a baby. So women who are the best candidates for ovulation induction are women who don't ovulate regularly on their own. There are very effective medications that will help a woman who doesn't ovulate, ovulate. Generally speaking, we like to understand why a woman is not ovulating. So before we start treatment, we would typically recommend evaluation with often ultrasound evaluation and blood hormone testing to make the diagnosis. Sometimes we can figure out what the problem is and fix it. Um, for example, women who have thyroid dysfunction uh, may not ovulate regularly, and fixing their thyroid disease will make them start ovulating. Uh, similarly, women who are obese may have ovulatory dysfunction related to their weight. And if we can help them lose weight, then they may not require medications for ovulation induction. Uh, the best candidates for ovulation induction are women who either have a diagnosis that is not amenable to other treatments or where other treatments may have failed. Then we can use medications to help them ovulate to achieve pregnancy. So the likelihood of pregnancy with a cycle of ovulation induction will be very variable depending on other fertility factors. So for a young, healthy woman who just doesn't ovulate on her own, then medications to induce ovulation will restore her natural fertility. But natural fertility isn't that great. Human beings just don't reproduce very efficiently meaning the likelihood of pregnancy in any one cycle in any healthy fertile couple is at best about 20 to 25% in a given month. So by inducing ovulation in a young healthy person, we're basically getting them back to natural fertility and odds of pregnancy would be expected to be about 20 to 25%. The odds of pregnancy in a single cycle are lower if there are other fertility factors. So in women who are older where egg quality may be affected, success rates are going to be a little bit less. In couples where there are other factors like sperm issues or a tubal factor, success rates are going to be less. But we also don't typically recommend just trying once. Normal healthy fertile couples don't just try one month to get pregnant and then give up, right? On average, it takes six months to get pregnant. Um, so we would often recommend trying at least a few times, typically three cycles, and then if we haven't been successful, despite everything else being good, we would stop and regroup and reevaluate at that point. So the most common medications used for ovulation induction are medications called clomiphene citrate or clomid and letrozole or femora. Uh, clomid is a selective estrogen receptor modulator, which is a fancy way of saying that it blocks estrogen receptors. So it effectively makes the brain think that there's less estrogen around and it makes the brain make more follicle stimulating hormone, which is the hormone that talks to the ovary that tells the ovary to get an egg ready to release. Femara does a similar thing, uh, but in a different way. So what Femara does is it changes how estrogen is metabolized and it effectively lowers estrogen throughout the body. So the brain actually does see less estrogen and then makes more follicle stimulating hormone. There are pros and cons to each. Um, Femara is maybe a little bit better at achieving a live birth in women who may have polycystic ovary syndrome. Um, Clomid has been around for a very, very, very long time and we have decades and decades and decades of safety and efficacy data for Clomid. 
Um, both are associated with a slight increased chance of multiple pregnancy. You can imagine if the brain is sending signals to get an egg ready, it's a little bit more likely that it might get two or three eggs ready. So that's something that we watch for by doing ultrasound monitoring for many women who are doing ovulation induction. There are other medications available. For some women who don't ovulate with Clomid or Femara, sometimes adding adjunct medications like metformin or dexamethasone may help depending on the situation. And if all else fails, medications are available that are basically replacing follicle stimulating hormones. So injectable gonadotropins or FSH by injection is another option, but is typically reserved for people who have failed everything else mainly because the risks are a lot higher with those medications and they tend to be much more expensive.